here in the studio by legendary TV presenter, author and film fan Richard Osman. Brilliant. Richard's come into the studio. His books are going to be made into a Netflix movie. Former Spurs Leeds Everton and England winger Aaron Lennon will also be joining us right in here for the final hour of the show. Great stuff to look forward to. And Cristiano Ronaldo has fired shots at Eric Ten Hag again this morning or last night on Rio's podcast. United fans, who's side you on? 03717 Give us a call for you to have your say. Who's side? Well, I'm going to say who's side you on you. I can tell you right now, you're, you're more Ronaldo than Ten Hag, aren't you? I think I'm more Ronaldo because, you know, we get told Manchester United growing up, playing against them, even watching them before I made my, my Premier League debut, Manchester United fighting for the title, fighting for the title. You can't go into a season and say, oh, we're not going to fight for the title. The pressure's not on us. You know, we can try and get into the top four. We'll be success at domestic mm-hmm. cup. Manchester United should be thinking, you know what? Any European competition we're in, we're going to try and win it. Premier League, we're going to try and win it. You know, you, it's yeah. not as if they're not spending money. Ali. If they had a, a problem with no, finances and they weren't spending money, they spent big money yeah. this summer. Well, listen, here's what Cristiano had to say about the club when speaking to Piers Morgan last year. I don't know what's going on, but since since the um, Sir Alex Ferguson left, I saw not evolution in the club. The progress was zero. For example, you have an interesting point that how the club as Manchester United after suck um, Ole, mm. they buy, they bring sport directive Ralph Regnick, which is something that nobody understands. This guy is, is not even a coach. A bigger club like Manchester United bring sport directive, surprise not only me, but all the world, you know, nothing changed. Surprisingly, not only the pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym, even some points in technology, the kitchen, the chefs, which is I appreciate, lovely, lovely persons. They stop in a in a time which is, is it surprised me a lot. I thought I will see different things, different as I mentioned before, technology, infrastructure. But unfortunately, we see many things that I'm used to see when I was 20, 21, 23. So surprised me a lot well, there's a couple of quotes here but I'm not going to read them out because I've read them out earlier we're just going to go straight to a couple yeah. of guys uh, J- Jacuzzi is important mate yeah, no, when I'm the one not. broke at Villa we were all upset mate <laughs> the cold bath never broke though I can tell the you hot right one did let me tell you something you would not be letting Gascoigne <laughs> anywhere near your jacuzzi that I can tell you somebody that's called 03717 is Phil and Phil's United fan Phil a very good morning thanks for taking the time good to morning call. Phil thanks for taking the time to call us this morning mate what, what did you think of, of the comments from Ronaldo last night Good morning, Ali. Morning, Gabby. Good morning, mate. Um, I think there's a way of putting things across yeah. without being too negative. He's writing what he's saying, but it's the way he's putting it over. He's obviously had a falling out with Ten Hag. I, I take that. But he's dampening what the, play, the supporters are feeling about him by the way he's saying it. Imagine you and Gabby have sat down at the chessboard and you've got both hands to start with to play the game. Now I'll put you both in handcuffs behind your back so carry on playing. Mm. That's exactly where Ten Hag is because the problem is not with Ten Hag. Ten Hag needs time and space to be able to do his job, whereas the people above him are handcuffing him. And that's where the problem lies. But so, Ronaldo can't come straight out and say that because he knows the amount of trouble he'll get into. How, how, how are they handcuffing him? He's been given money to spend. This summer he spent a lot of money. Now he's time to get results for the club, no? Do you compare it when Martin Edwards was in charge from Franco Farrell right the way through to Big Ron and then Sir Alex, the freedom was there both in the way that you play and the players you get in. And the money was all for the club and the players. Now the, the money in the main is being drawn out okay. of the club and he's been told who he can sign Come on. and the type of player. Come on, he's, he signed players that he wanted from the Dutch league. Did, did the, the Manchester United hierarchy make him pay 90 million for Anthony? No, they didn't. Well, did Anthony, they? No, they didn't. Did they let him buy Ugarte, Yoro, De Ligt, Xerxes this season? Yes, they did. They're players he wants. You can't keep blaming the hierarchy. Now he's got the players he wants. Go and show. No excuses. 
Liverpool game, dreadful? I agree with Liverpool, dreadful. That was one of the worst games we've played under Ten Hag for many a years, but I had the same criticism. Under Mourinho, we went to of Liverpool and parked the bus. Mm. And well, we never, ever go to Anfield and park the bus. We go out and attack. Absolutely, Phil. Listen, really appreciate you taking time to call. Yeah, Thanks very cheers, much mate. again. Some interesting I, views. I'm oh, sorry, mate. Like, <clears throat> no, listen, <throat> listen, no doubt about it. Wind me up. If you're, if you're a manager of coach and you got a few quid to spend and you spend it, you can't. And it's you that spends it. Exactly. See, they, see the, question, the, the question is again, we'll go back to sometimes. If those players are brought in for you and they're not your choice, that's a completely he's went, he's that, yeah, yeah, I know. He's it's a completely got, different argument. We need to move on. Let's get more on this with Talk Sports Chief Football Correspondent Alex Crook. Crookie, a very good morning, Paul. How are you? Good morning, Crookie. Yeah, good morning. I, I'm very well. Uh, Gabby's still president of the Eric Ten Hag fan club, I see. <laughs> well, I, I just can't have the excuses anymore, Crookie. He's bringing in players that he wants. Come on, mate, please. Listen, I, I make you right on one hand, but I think it's really interesting uh, listening to that interview that you just played out with Cristiano Ronaldo uh, when he was still a Manchester United player with Piers Morgan and looking at his most recent comments because I think he almost contradicts himself. On one hand, he's admitting the club is stuck in a bit of a time warp, hasn't kicked on since he was there. On the other, he's criticising Ten Hag for saying that they can't compete for the Premier League title. I think Ten Hag is being realistic. And what I'd ask you, Gabby, you, you've listed some players there Ugarte, uh, Rasmus Hoyland, would either of those players with the greatest will in the world get in the Manchester City squad, let alone the Manchester yeah, City I first level? Would they, they get in the Arsenal team against I, I, Spurs? I, I, I think they would. Weekend? I think Hoyland would start, definitely. I you think, think Hoyland would... would start for Manchester City ahead of no, the Sterling Harland? No, you said against um, Spurs for Arsenal, especially with Arsenal's injury problems at the moment. Bring Havertz back one, Hoyland up front. I think he would, yeah. The point I'm making, we spoke to Dwight York on the Inside Devils podcast yesterday, available on YouTube, and he was saying that Manchester United are signing good players, but they're no longer signing elite-level players. So they're signing players who potentially could get them in the top four, but it's not a squad that's capable of competing for the title. Now, yes, on one hand, you can criticise Ten Hag because he has been a driving force in that recruitment. You're absolutely right about that, certainly until this summer. I think Ugarte is, is a club signing as opposed to a Ten Hag <clears> signing. <throat> but you have to criticise the hierarchy. Look at the latest accounts. £113 million losses for the last financial year, Manchester United, despite the fact they had record turnover of more than £650 million. That isn't on Eric Ten Hag. No. That is on the Glazers. The reason Old Trafford is falling apart isn't because of Eric Ten Hag. It's on the Glazers. The reason the training ground isn't up to purpose when you compare it to the likes of Manchester City isn't on Eric Ten Hag. There's a couple of things I would say on it. There's a couple of things I would say on it, Crookie. I actually think... I think you make, make, there's some some very very valid points in terms of signings, right? The, the signings, as we know, recruitment are absolutely vital. I think you could make a case for the best signing of the summer, actually been a player who left a club and came back to a club, Manchester City and Gundogan. It's, it, it's it's amazing. Yeah. You look at that; he is absolutely strengthening that team again. But where where are we United and Eric Ten Hag, Crookie? I don't, I don't think he does, do, and I don't know whether it's a little bit lost in translation. I know he's been complete, completely up front, but he has to deliver when he delivers his messages to United fans. I, I, I genuinely believe he has to be more positive, not not wild and crazy with, with, with predictions. W w listen, you and I know that Manchester United ain't going to win the league this year, but I think you can deliver the message with a little bit more positivity. Yeah, I agree with that, and, and obviously we, we had an incident after... Uh, the last game when he questioned the players' mentality and then when I challenged him about it, he denied that he questioned the players' mentality. Yeah. So I do think he's floundering um, a little bit and I do think this narrative that he's putting out there, that he's more successful than any other Premier League manager than Pep Guardiola over the last couple of years, United being a cup team isn't going to, isn't going to cut it with Manchester United fans. They want yeah. to see a team uh, that is capable of challenging for place in the top four. And we haven't seen that since the start of last season. They've lost 20 odd games on his watch, and he can't afford to keep losing football matches. Who, whose fault totally is it, Crookie? Crookie, quickly, that. sorry, because we've got a break. Whose fault is it that Manchester United lost to Liverpool so comfortably? Is that the board? Ultimately, it comes. Or ultimately, the manager, the or manager the is going to be judged on that. But I, I maintain, Gabby, if you look at the, the downward spiral since Sir Alex Ferguson and David Gill left the football club, the problem goes deeper than the man in the dugout. Jose Mourinho isn't a rubbish manager. Louis mm -hmm. van Gaal isn't a rubbish manager. Eric Ten Hag isn't. 
a dreadful manager. So the, the problem comes at the door of the owners. Obviously, Ineos are in there now trying to change that. They're trying to change the mentality of the football club. They're trying to get some organisation at boardroom level. That is going to take time. Is Eric Ten Hag the right man long term? I think he's got to prove it by getting results. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.